Uh, hi, um, hope you're enjoying your Save the Hands event. My name is Meryl Lund. I live in Naples, Florida. For the last seven or eight years, I've been inventing tools for therapists. I made my living as a glass blower for 25 years, actually in Alberta, uh, sculpting glass with my hands all the time, so I use my hands all the time. I've been now doing massage for 25 years as well. Uh, they overlap some had the two careers and uh, one of the things that I found is that uh, the therapy as much as I enjoy it I do neuromuscular therapy neurosomatic therapy I'm also trained in advanced craniosacral with Upledger Institute uh, a number of different things I studied with Deepak Chopra I was trained to teach some of his work at one time so I have kind of a diverse background but uh, having the skills to do artwork and saw the need for something that was going to help me with my hands obviously I was able to uh, create you know, like little sculptures that actually make your job easier and actually uh, allow you to work on your patients more effectively now you can get much more precise and much more thorough using the tools than you could ever do with your hands. That's the big reason that I invented them. Of course the secondary reason is that my hands were hurting and there were things that I just uh, was having harder and harder time doing that I knew my patients needed doing and uh, so it was logical. I, I kept in my work saying why doesn't somebody invent something that does this or does that and one day I came to the conclusion if somebody was going to do it, it was going to have to be me. And having the uh, skills of sculpture in my past, uh, I was probably the obvious person to, to do this. My tools are now used throughout the world. There's a hospital in Saudi Arabia that uses my tool, orthopedic surgeon there, uh, a few hospitals in the United States. My tools are all throughout Eastern Europe and Western Europe and the UK and Spain, Italy, France, Germany. I sell more tools to the Chinese medical community in Australia than anywhere in the world. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why that is, but uh, it is a fact. And of course I have tools in Canada and the United States as well. Um, I was honored when Joni asked me to come and present to you guys in Alberta. Uh, if it was a little more cost-effective, I'd be there in person. Uh, obviously, that would be much better, but this is, thanks to the world of technology, this is a way that I can kind of be there. And I have sent some tools for you guys to play with and try out, which uh, I'm sure Joni will uh, help you uh, get started with. Hopefully, she's had a little bit of time to view a number of my videos, which are online, and uh, we'll be able to instruct you a little bit. One of the first things I invented was this thumb tool, which is almost like a little exoskeleton that goes over your thumb. Uh, as far as I could see, all of the tools that were on the market, and there weren't a lot, that were for your thumb, actually slipped over your thumb and you used your thumb to use them. So there was really no point. Either you were pressing with your thumb on the tool to press into the body, or uh, you are using your thumb. There's one with a rubber thing that goes over your thumb. Again, you're just using your thumb. So this actually is like an ectoskeleton that goes over your thumb. Now, when you're pressing, all of the pressure is delivered into your hand in here. So there's no pressure on your thumb at all. You can see my thumb is completely on vacation in here. Sometimes people will write to me and say, well, my thumb doesn't reach the end. Well, it's not supposed to reach the end. If it reached the end, you'd be using your thumb to do the work. Now, I love these and use these a lot, but over the years, as I've developed more and more of these tools, I find that I use the thumb tools less and less. This is actually way easier on my hand, and it is so much more versatile. There's so many different ways that you can use it. Uh, there are some select areas where I still use the thumb tool, but I use this tool and this tool each about 35% of the time in my practice. In other words, 35% of the time this is in my hand, 35% of the time this is in my hand, 30% of the time I'm using the other tools. The other tools are effective and helpful, but these are the workhorses for my practice anyway. Uh, there's an effleurage tool. I can do uh, 
I can do the la the whole group on the one side of the spine, the whole erector group, all in one pass. I also have a tip like this that is one that goes to your shoulder where you can have to use your body weight to do the work. So if you're working on athletes or uh, bigger people or people that require a lot of pressure, uh, you'll see in the video to, to come that you can use the, it's, it's called the best friend tool, the one with the crutch, it's adjustable length. Uh, but there's the effleurage tool, uh, spoon built. There are several others on my site. There's a laminar groove tool and uh, uh, coming near in the future is a tool called the Stingray, which is kind of works on the principle that the Grayson tools work. If you know anything about Grayson tools, they're, they're a stainless steel tool that I think they cost over $1,000 each. Uh, and for $25, you can do uh, basically the same work or similar work. Anyway, each of the tools I've tried to make very reasonable. Uh, $25 is basically the what most of the tools cost. And uh, I made a tool that had a tip on it like this at one time, another one like this. And I realized that I could combine these together so I didn't have to be setting down the tool and picking up a different tool all the time. Also, I could save therapist's money by having there's six working heads here, and there's two affleurage areas there and another area which I use on the side of the neck here. So most of the tools have six or seven purposes in, uh, in each one. Okay, some of the uh, great things that you can do with these tools to help with your hands. Uh, obviously there are muscles, ligaments, tendons, fascia all over in the hand. Uh, one of the joints that bother me. I, I blew glass for 25 years using my hands all the time. I've been doing massage now for 25 years. The two overlapped a little bit. Uh, so my hands have a few issues. And uh, this joint right in here is one of the areas. And you see with this tool I can get right into that joint and work that area in there which can be very very tender. Probably just about I think every massage therapist I've ever worked on has problems in that joint right in there. And that, if you can see the tip of that tool, it will reach in there where your fingers would never reach in. You can reach right in there, get those ligaments that stabilize that joint. Of course this thumb web comes across here. It comes over and attaches actually to the metatarsal on the second finger, so you can work through all of that area there really nicely as well. You'll see amazing results with that. Uh, of course you can get into all of these other joints as well. Also something you may not have thought of is these interosseous muscles in between the metatarsals. Metacarpals, did I say metatarsals? <laughs> of course, oh yes, the, uh, this uh, metacarpal comes all the way up here and uh, of the thumb web here come over and attach to the second metacarpal. And so of course you can work all of that area very very effectively with that. Scraping it, you can get into this joint right there. Uh, again you may not have thought of it but these muscles, these interosseous muscles that are in between the metatarsals, metacarpals, uh, you can get right into. Of course this all applies to the feet as well. Uh, this is an area that's key when you're working on feet as well, but uh, right now we're focusing on the hand. You can see I can get in between those bones, and same thing here. You can work the uh, joints. I would go along and work every one of them. Any area will benefit from, from work on here. Use them instead of using your hands all the time. Uh, it will take a whole lot of the toll uh, that will happen over the years off of your hands. And of course the most important thing is that it actually does a better job for your patients than your hands do. Now I know people initially find that a little hard to believe, but it's absolutely uh, true. You can get into areas and be more effective. Uh, the difference between your patients getting better and just getting improvement is usually how precise and how thoroughly you work and you cannot work the body as thoroughly and precisely with your hands as you can with these tools. And of course a lot of the uh, 
muscles that run the fingers are up here in the arm and one of the nice things about this same tool is that you can do uh, but you can see that I can do effleurage this tool fits in there very beautifully uh, on a smaller arm I would probably use that section in there but you can really work those of course all of these muscles including on these epicondyles here you can get in and really treat so Ruth, them. Uh, this is the about the first time you've used this the tools? This is the first time I've used the tool. Yeah. So how's it? Uh, I, I, I have many people that think that the tools are going to be difficult to use or or they're not going to feel as good as having your hands on the person. Well, clearly you have both your hands on the person even using the tool, which is the way I've designed them. Um, any comments or? Um, actually, it's much easier than using my fingers. I can feel more because the head of the tool is right down into the laminate groove here. And as you move along and you find spots that are tight, you can actually feel them through the tool or not? I can feel them through the tool. I can. Yeah much better than I can feel them with my fingers. You cannot feel uh, the tool on your uh, If I didn't skin. tell you I had a tool, would no, you know? No, no, no. And I receive every week now one, two, three massages. And of course you can apply as little or as much pressure as you need as the therapist as well. You, you don't have to go in because you can and work mm -hmm. extremely deep. Mm -hmm. For those people who need that, it's terrific and those that don't you can work much more gently yeah. and I can see how you're, you you've taken to how to hold that tool really quickly you've got both hands touching the body and you've got your fingers sensing where the tool is and you've only been using that four or five minutes I believe yes well, heat. so I'm using tool. the t-bar tool I'm using this flat hedge and going along right along that root of the scapula Again, if it was a big person and it was a very precise trigger point, I could use the that part of the T-bar and go right in, but no need for that. And Kate, now this part of the this pointed area on the tool, I can slip right up against her root of the There's scapula. A little area. Deep underneath there where trigger points will hide and constantly yeah, react. fit right in between the ribs beautifully. So you can palpate which direction they go. And there you can see I'm right in there. But I will, of course, have both of my hands on her body. So I have complete control of where that tip use goes. This on the side of the foot as well. You can use this all over this calcaneus. Now when we go over here along this side, you can see in the picture in picture, there's a muscle that runs right along there. She's very tender and right in Any that trigger spot. points that we find, I could even take this. For example, it's just perfect for getting into that uh, piriformis. Very comfortable for your hand. Your fingers are on vacation. I could be using the thumb tool that slips over my thumb, thumb for this, but uh, I find that these tools that you're seeing me use, I use far more than I use the thumb tools. When I first invented the thumb tools, I used them to do everything that my thumbs did before. Now I found that I find these so much more convenient that uh, there are from select places where I use the thumb tools, but very often I use these T-bars and L-bars far more. Now you could get over into the tensor fasciolata using this tool, but the best way of getting it, if it's something that you really need to get into, is with the best friend tool, the crest of her ilium here. So using the best friend tool with the round tip, I can get using, I've, I've put the tool against my tummy, and I have the tool right into that just below the crest of the ilium, so I'm in that tensor fasciolata. And again, as I get down lower, I can move the tool down towards my hip more. Virtually completely effortless for me. This hand's pushed hard into her body, this thumb is pressed in, 
and my hands are touching each other. This way I've got complete control and stability of the tool. Relief. Uh, okay, so you can work through there. Then you can take the little tool and work right in between the spinous processes. You can, there's little muscles, there's little ligaments, and little tendons. Yeah, I can go right in between. And you want to work race. through on some people each and every one of these little areas and work them through. I could go up one and I can feel right through the tool. There's the area right there. Now the really nice thing about this tool, one of the nice things is if you come across a muscle, because of the shape of the tool, it will just lift up and over and not catch on that tight muscle. I could use the rounded tip on the precious tool. That one is really becoming one of my favorite tools. I can do this whole laminar groove really precise. Right there I feel a little speed bump. And I can hear a, a little vocalization from my patient. Hello, my name is Paul St. John. I'm the founder of the St. John Method of Neuromuscular Therapy and Integrative Neurosomatic Therapy. I want to talk to you about these ingenious devices made by a friend of mine, Merrill Lunn, because they will extend your career. They are remarkable in their application. The design is utilized to maximize the manipulation of the tissues in a way that will get you the most therapeutic benefit possible while saving your hands. Because if you've been doing this as long as I have, career extending means something. Pressing on the ends of fingers and joints, compressing the joints, uh, can cause a great deal of discomfort and deterioration of the joint. When you have a tool like this that can uh, extend fascia and open up fascia, tendons, ligaments go in between the phalanges. Every uh, thought process that Merrill has used in designing and applicating, even this little hump right here allows you to grip the tool with control. But by minimizing the amount of pressure um, that would go on if you were going to compress your fingers like this. You know, you're compressing each one of those joints, goes up into your, your fingers and into the wrist. The uh, underside of the scapula, this would be the back of the scapula, the infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and underneath here, of course, is the subscapularis, which runs to the front of the arm. This would be the collarbone. So this nice little tool here, you can sneak in, this would be your perspective when you're working, but what you're actually doing, you're getting right up into your, into working all of these tissues in here, back and forth. This tool just fits in there really beautifully. The subscapular, how difficult that is on your phone. That's where the spoon bill tool comes in. It is just a dream come true. You can slide up underneath there, just like that. You can bury it. You can see her scapula nicely here. That's why I chose her for this demonstration. And you can see that I can slide that right up. And now my intention is to push up into there and also to put pressure uh, laterally and superior. So I could on some people even put my hand. That's why I made this handle longer. This way I can actually kind of use this as a fulcrum to put extra pressure into the underside and of the shoulder so blade. Some, somebody's very sore, you may just sneak in there and, and stop and hold. At it. And I could work through this. Oh, there we found a sore spot. So we actually are getting into something in this position that we couldn't get the other way. Many of the areas where I originally designed the thumb tool to use, I'm using the L bars or the T bars. I find they're more comfortable. This one you're pretty much restricted to to this tool. Now, again, if you recall, I said that we could use other tools when she was face down and get in there. So you're kind of just getting the final part of it. Now, 
this finger is feeling the spinous processes and this one's sensing the transverse processes so I can keep the tool right in the right in the valley you can work through like that. in the uh, clinic obviously I would do more targeted releases uh, but for the sake of this video I'm going to work in a progression from feet to head on the patient so that people who are doing more general work can also incorporate this while they're learning to do more precise work so the first thing working on the uh, foot I'm going to grab a hold of the metatarsals and I'm actually going to shake the uh, calf uh, to loosen up any fascia this also mobilizes the joints uh, the tibia and fibula well, obviously I'm going to stretch those uh, calf muscles but I can also get a real good palpation here of the muscles in the foot right where they insert onto the heel the uh, first thing we're going to do now is to use the t-bar tool and we'll use the uh, flat edge and I'm going to work the fascia along the bottom of the foot of course the fascia starts here on the calcaneus and runs this direction so first we're just doing the most superficial layer there are several layers going deeper and deeper in so we've warmed up the fascia now when we go over here along this side you can see in the picture in picture there's a muscle that runs right along there she's very tender right in that spot so in an actual therapeutic setting I would press in and hold and work that through now we're going to leave that foot for a couple minutes to let blood infuse and some of those trigger points to I'm going deactivate to stabilize the foot and just work those joints now I'm doing some circumduction first I was doing some rotation okay we're uh, finished with the toes you've done all of the toes you're going to go back and work the bottom of the foot deeper get those deep muscles and then uh, I'm going to take the edge of this tool now and go right over here and I can work all of these areas you can use this on the side of the foot as well you can use this all over this calcaneus all over this talus uh, I would also get in here and depending on how tender they are uh, this is fairly healthy I would probably switch over to the uh, precious tool and it will get in a little more aggressively you can see it has a little sharper edge there and now I'm going to go around catch even these tendons around the malleolus uh, if there were areas in the bottom of the foot that were very very tight I would also use that edge to go in and now work we those. could uh, also go of course right underneath that uh, Achilles tendon and work that a little more generally we can also go up on once you finish the whole foot and the heel uh, you want to remobilize okay, so the next thing we're going to do is some traction in this knee I put the knee between my, I mean the ankle between my knees and then get a hold of the knee and just push lateral back and, and forth we're going to uh, start working on that soleus and gastrox with the best friend tool so I'll put a little lotion on it and on her calf and I have the luxury of bringing the table up a little bit higher and I will adjust the tool to the proper height for me so we're going to work through the gastrox here using the best friend tool I can put this area on the outside of the gastrox and work the more lateral one more specifically or of course I can come over and work the medial one more specifically so we're warming up the whole area really nicely even pushing the gastrox into the soleus etc a bit now of course we want to get in between the gastrox so I'm going to switch my tool and depending on how healthy their muscles are I would probably use the round area on the precious tool and that will allow me to get deep right in between those heads and treat all of that also treating a little bit of the soleus here as well she's a little tender there now of course we need to treat everything from the from the bone over this direction we're going to pull the gastrox over and again we can slide up inside here with this tool I might initially on her use this part of the t-bar uh, it's going to do a little more general work here and the first thing I would do is grab the best friend tool with the effleurage tip and 
again, depending on my angle, I'll move my hand so you can see the tool, it's going to cover a great deal of area here. And by leaning the tool this way, this is going to be activated more by leaning this way, I could get into the opposite side. Now I can go right up to that ischial tuberosity and get those origins. Now there's a tight spot right there, so if I was in an actual therapeutic setting, I would spend more time there. Okay, in order to get into the more lateral part of the leg, I will put the tool against my hip and the effleurage tool on the side of her. Now you notice that when I'm using these tools, that I have my hand actually touching the body. I have my hand in full contact okay, with these the uh, hamstring origins uh, under, underneath. Again, I can get underneath there a little bit and get drawn those. on the sacrum here and the iliolumbar ligaments. And uh, we're going to work the sacrum itself, which has ligaments on it. You can see as you get over further, the lines are going to be shorter. So we want to be sure and do that whole sacrum on both sides. Okay, we've drawn on the sacrum here and the iliolumbar ligaments. And of course, there are ligaments right on the sacrum, no muscles and we need to treat those. They stabilize the SI joint, they stabilize the whole area. So we're going to treat in this sort of a pattern. Now for the sake of the camera, I'm going to go to the other side. And uh, initially you can use this tool and we'll go right in and treat those areas. Uh, depending on how tight the person is, I will usually go right to the precious tool. So now I'm going to go out a half an inch and treat. I'm going to switch over because this tool is actually much more effective. And as you work your way down, you'll feel like right there, there's a tender spot probably or a tight spot at the very least. And then of course I'll go over each row that you work will be progressively shorter because the sacrum is triangular shaped. Of course, if she was very, very sore, I could be using one of the hand tools. Drag the leg towards you. But basically, you're trying to bring the fascia one way, hang on to it, and bring the leg back to give a nice stretch to it. Do not believe me. We are not in the church. Just try. It's fantastic. I am just in the school, and I have so... Look, my finger. Uh -huh. and I just make 135 uh, massages. I am not a uh, nail professional and I have pain. But yeah. with this, why I have to push now, deep no, tissue massage. But good. the tools, super. That's good. Yeah, just try. Try my. Oh, I, wow. I told you and I repeat. Oh do my. not believe yeah, me. That feels yeah. so good. Just try. try. It's an easy work and it's more effective for your clients. I feel more with the tool than I can with my fingers.